Hey, good morning. Uh, Sunday, uh, June 28th, about 4 o'clock in the morning. We got to get through this. Uh, nesting families. And we're almost done with the uh, modeling techniques and the family editor, and there's so much more to it than just what we've covered so far. We could spend months on uh, modeling techniques for families. And we will. Uh, MEPs right around the corner. Uh, let's get through the architectural uh, aspect of it which we're going to continue to do. And then uh, we're going to move on to the MEP systems, the structural systems, civil systems. Um, but nesting families is an important aspect of it. So when you think of nesting, obviously, um, a lot of words, a lot of ideas come to mind. But uh, in a geometric sense and in a Revit sense, uh, geome geometry from one family can be loaded into another family. This process is called nesting, and it allows you to create a single element that will be used many times in another family. This method is much more efficient than creating an element and then grouping and copying it around, excuse me, the same family. Let's review some benefits of using nested families. When one family is loaded into another, the nested family behaves as a single unified component this means it will be much easier to change and control the instance placements of a nested family. Even though the nested family may seem like a static component, references and parameters in nested families can be driven by controls in the host family. A nested family can also be controlled by a family type parameter, which will allow you to select from multiple nested families as another parameter in the host family. This feature is incredibly powerful for creating design iteration within families that are in your projects. You will see this functionality later in this chapter when you load two different share families into the table family and use a family type parameter to select between them. As a final note about nested families, you should be aware, uh, always be aware of the insertion point defined in the families you load into other families. As we mentioned previously in this chapter, a consistent insertion point will ensure that a nested family does not flip-flop in unintended directions when you switch between family types. Let's get back to the exercise on which you should still be working in the C15 table leg family, and they had us go all over, but we do still have the uh, C15 table leg open. We have this uh, bar stool family that we created. Uh, I moved the, uh, the, the footrest down to its appropriate level, if you look. It doesn't look right there, but it does because it's a three-legged chair. So anyway, we have this little stool that we created that we're going to uh, assemble now that we bought it from Ikea. All right, so we... Um, now that we switched to the C15 table, um, which is what it wants us to do. You can see there's no geometry in it. So switch to the C15 table file, which I downloaded from the Books Companion website, and activate the reference level, which is activated. From the Create tab, click the Component tool, and the C15 table leg family should be the active component in the type selector. Look in the Properties palette at the Host property, and make sure that it is level, reference level. Place four instances of the leg near the corners of the table, and one exactly at the crossing of the center reference planes. Well, hmm. Let's see, they, maybe they already put all this stuff in here. So let's take a look. Let's go to the Create tab. Um, right, Create tab, go to the component. And no, it says it should be loaded. Am I in C15 table? Yeah. And activate the reference level floor plan. From the Create tab, click the component tool, and the C15 table like family should be the active component in the type selector. Well, it's not. It's asking me to load one. <coughs> well, that's uh, that's not good. Yeah, it wants us to load one. Okay, sure. C fifteen table. No, that's a that's a family. Oh wait a second! I opened up. I opened up. C15 RFA, right? And is it asking me to open up the uh, C15 uh, project file? 
Maybe that's, I don't see. I see table finished. It's an RFA. Um, let me just take a peek at something before I go any further. I think uh, the book may be leading us down the wrong road or I'm leading you down the wrong road. Let's take a look in um, Family Editor and see if table, RFA, no, there's a, no RFTs, um, no um, RVTs for table. So it's a, it's a family. It's a family. It's not a, um, it's not a project. So when I hit component, it's asking us to load it. If we're in a family, um, are we loading the leg? Should be the active component. Oh, well, it's not. All right, so fine. It's not the active component. We're going to have to search for it. So we're going to go to component, and we do want to load one, and we want to load leg, table leg. You know, we already, we were creating it right here. All right, so table leg is inserted. Look at the type selector, right? Table leg, uh, properties palette. At the host property, make sure that the is on level one. Reference level, right? Level one. What it's saying here, place four instances like near the corners of the table. Well, there's no geometry in this table. There's no geometry. So just hold that thought. Let me open up one other thing. Um, Here's the table finished. Let's take a look at it finished. Well, here it is finished. Now, if I look at it here, you can see they loaded in four legs and they loaded in four chairs. So let's just read through it. Switch to the C15 table file and activate the reference level floor plan from the create tab, click the component tool, and the C15 table like family show you the active component in the type selector. Look at the properties palette with the host property. Make sure that it is reference level, and it is, it was. Place four instances of the leg near the corners of the table and one exactly at the crossing of the center reference planes, right in the middle there. See it? Add dimensions for each of the four corner legs and adjust legs as necessary so that they are offset exactly six inches from each leg reference plane. And they are. He tells us by looking at it in plan. Right? That's about six inches, right? Of course, I can't select the reference line, so I'll just measure it, right? We can just measure. Of course, that's turned off. Any then, make sure it's six inches. It looks six inches to me. And um, why is this tool inactivated? Well, that's irritating. Oh, I'm in 3D. That's why. If I went to reference level, and I went to measure, I went to the center here to here, well, make sure it's six inches. Those units look pretty screwed up, don't they? Well, there you go, six inches from this reference line, nine inches from the uh, center reference line. All right, so as you see, they, they told us to do all this, but it's already been done. And um, the exercise file that they asked us to open uh, was assuming that we had a table in there already, but it's not the case. So we're just going to continue with the exercise with the, uh, with the family that's already created, and we'll see if we can get through it that way. Um, but as you can see, just by looking at this, the more time you put into it, the more extravagant uh, your models can become. They're not just simple geometric shapes or, or conceptual masses that we, we revolve and extrude around axis lines. Um, you can make some, some, some nice uh, uh, articulations. Okay, so uh, add the dimensions for each of the four legs and adjust legs as necessary so that they're exactly offset from each leg reference plane. Lock these dimensions to preserve the offset. Well, they're locked. Right? These are all locked. As you can see here, if I tab, there is a reference line there. Right? You can see all the reference points. Okay, so, uh, 
dimensions for each of the corner legs and adjust the legs as necessary so that they are exactly six inches from each leg which reference plane. You lock these dimensions to preserve the offset. Select the middle leg and in the properties panel, click the associate family parameter button for the visibility for the visible property. Associate, let's see here. Associate family parameter. Uh, let's see here. Select the middle leg in the properties panel. Click the associate family parameter button button for the visible property. I don't see it. Associate the where's that parameter? Oh, is it right here? Maybe this parameter? No. I don't see that parameter. Uh, blah blah blah. Let's see if it's built in. I don't see that parameter. Associate family parameter. I don't see it. I don't see the option for making a new parameter either. Well, let's, let's look at this one more time. Click the add parameter. Okay, well, um, I want to add a parameter. So, I, will I have to do it up here? Uh, blah, 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 blah. No. No, no. Where am I, where am I going to put it? Associate family parameter. Uh, I'm going to put it, let's see here. I guess it's coming under here. So we're going to create a new parameter. Middle leg. Middle leg. Middle leg. All right, so it's almost complete. This will be a yes, no parameter. That can be controlled with a logic formula that will be driven by the length of the table. Okay, so that looks good. Let's hit the OK for that. Uh, it is already defined. Please choose a different name. Where do you see uh, middle leg parameter? Leg material, leg height, default elevation. I don't see the middle leg parameter. It's saying that it's, uh, it's a family parameter, but I don't see it. Uh, I don't see it. Let's take another look. I don't see that parameter. Okay. Well, when I search it up, I sure indeed see it. I don't see it in the uh, type parameters dialog box. It's a family type parameter. I don't see it. So that kind of brings us to a... Uh, it brings us to a uh, impasse. Um, okay, well... Let's see here. No. Trigger's cut. We talked about that one. And we have down here, I don't see that parameter. All right, well, just hold that thought for a second. Let me take a look up here. Speed bump. Well, it's a family. Let me take a look at the family. Break this up into. Let me see this for a second. All right, let's just move forward to see if that uh, affects us down the road. It's probably going to. It's a yes, no parameter, I don't see it. It'll be driven by the length of the table. Open the family types dialog box 
in the form of a field for the middle length parameter, type the following. Well, I was just in there. Family types, you know, let's see. Um, middle leg. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's under, it's under other, but it's grayed out. Okay, hold on. It's in there. There's no value for it. I didn't see it when I selected it. Maybe when we insert the family. Let's just follow it along. Type the, um, in the form of the field for the middle leg parameter, type the following length greater than seven foot for metric type in 2000 millimeters. Well, length greater than seven foot. Okay, let's just hit apply. It's already done for us. This simple formula will make the middle leg visible when the length parameter exceeds seven foot and invisible when it does not. So it's intermediate support as the table gets bigger if you add a leaf. All right, so you can do this in a few different ways, but when you are dealing with multiple instances of an object, we recommend you feed a value into an nested type parameter rather than align and lock each instance to reference planes within the hosted family. Okay, select one of the legs and then click the Edit Type button in the Properties palette. In the Type Properties dialog box, assign the, uh, click the Assign Family Parameter, AFP, button for the Leg Height Parameter. Add a new parameter named uh, Nested Leg Height. So select the leg, um, Edit Type in the Properties palette. Uh, in the Type Properties dialog box, click the Assign Family Parameter. Which one? Leg material? Leg height? For the leg height. Right, leg height. And that's assign family parameter. Associate family parameter. Nested leg height, which is already in there as a parameter. So that's what it wanted us to do. But we could have, if you look at it again, we could have created another parameter. So it's already completed for us. Click the uh, associate family parameter button for the leg material. And add a new parameter named nested leg material, which is already added for us. Click OK to close the property dialog box. If it wasn't, we can create it right here. Press OK to close the dialog box. You must associate the parameters in nested families with parameters in the host families, even if it is simple, simply to allow materials to be assigned to the nested elements. Open the families, family types dialog box. In the formula field for the nested leg height parameter, type the following head dash tabletop thickness. Height tabletop top thickness. So edit type. So we have a height in the form of the field for the nested leg height in the formula field. Nested leg height. Wait, that's uh, we got to be in the uh, family types dialog box, not in the edit type, in the families types dialog box. We can get the formula. Um, nested leg height parameter. Nested leg height parameter. Uh, nested chair, nested leg material. Nested leg height parameter. Type the following. Height minus tabletop thickness is the formula. And we have that. That makes sense. Make sure that the parameters are spelled exactly because they are case sensitive. This formula will, be, will use the overall height of the table minus the thickness of the tabletop to drive the height of the nested legs. Switch between type one and type two to verify the behavior of the legs. Even though the middle leg is still visible in the family editor, it will be invisible when the family is loaded into the project environment. So type one and type two to verify the behavior of the legs. And huh, that's funny. Just flip back and forth. And you'll see the trigger cut we discussed. It's all finished now. It brought all those exercises into this finished exercise where we triggered the cut to be, it was all set away from the table, negative four inches. And uh, we said that when a uh, trigger was activated, it would uh, encompass the edge of the table and make that, that silhouette or that profile cut uh, around the edge to bevel it or give it a, 
a chamfer or a fillet, um, and it's still built into this um, to this family. So it's good to have. I mean, this is a pretty good family to have. And I've worked in instances where um, they were utilizing other software platforms, especially Jews just recently, AutoCAD LT, and they, they wanted every dynamic, they wanted each block to be so dynamic that it had every every bell and whistle you could think of, and it was o it was overly constrained. So you gotta be careful. Whether you're using dynamic blocks or whether you're using families, it's the same concept. Um, there just was always one um, option that the dynamic block couldn't do. So there was always that need to program in another dynamic constraint or a uh, property or variable uh, into a dynamic block or a family because it wasn't done already. And it always takes time. And then what happens is you, you get on the, the, the front end, well, I asked you to do this and um, it's taking this long. And what, what they're not saying is that you're not simply going in and moving a line over an inch uh, or you're not adding a circle. What you're doing is going back into these uh, families that have nested families within them and you're editing all the parameters and all the values and adding and uh, deleting um, parameters just so that you have the availability to make it more flexible in the future. Um, and then you need to roll with those punches because most of the folks that you meet that can't, that, that may very well be engineers and architects that can't use the software, just can't comprehend it or refuse to or d design differently, maybe with a pencil, they're always going to have um, a preference as to how they want something. You're going to need to conform to that. Um, Again, not everyone is going to use the software to articulate architecture or engineering. They, they may be a process where um, you get handed paper and you have to turn it into computer data. So there's a bit of a um, communication gap that could exist between uh, the conveyor of that information and the one who actually gets it into a digital format. Mm -hmm. And over the years, you're going to find that um, shit rolls down the hill. All right, you, you got no one to blame. All right, so uh, the client's always right. The boss is always right. It's my way or the highway. So let's not get into, uh, into that right now. Let's just make sure that the parameters are spelled exactly because they're case sensitive. This form will be used to try, uh, we use the overall height of the table minus the thickness of the tabletop to drive the height of the nested legs. Switch between type 1 and type 2 to verify the behavior of the legs. Even though the middle leg is still visible in the family editor, it will be invisible when the family is loaded into the project environment. Save the table family and load it into the C15 desk project file, which I, I didn't see one. So let's just hit apply. Okay. Let's uh, not save the project because we don't have a project. Let's just save the family and let's uh, open up this project file that there's a desk project RVT. Uh, save the table family loaded into the C15 desk project file. Okay, well, there's a desk project RVT. Let's open that because this is going to be the host for all of these families that we're going to be inserting. Okay, so, oh, and it has a, uh, it has, uh, <laughs> has other things in it. So let me just go to level one here. Let's start. This is 3D of, of the uh, table finished. We can close that. This is the reference level of the RFA, the family table, the table finished family. And this is the reference level of the C15 table that we were going to create as an RFA. Okay, so here's level one. Let's look at this in 3D and see what we got. Well, we've got two, we have four desks here. Okay, so that's one of the type one instances. Um, hold on. Save the table family and load it into the C15 desk project file referenced previously in this chapter. 
Take some instances of each type and observe the differences in size and number of legs. Okay, so let's get that in here. It looks like there's not much room. We got too many desks. Let's move some of these desks out of the way before we uh, start. Let's get this desk over here. In the corner here, let's get this desk over here. Let's uh, get this one up over here. Let's get this one over here. Wind it up a little bit. Why don't we spin these two puppies around? 90 degrees. Move them up over here. And their drawers, actually I should have moved them there. Their drawers are facing that way. So let's get them down here. All right, so we have a little bit more room. All right, so now it's saying, well, it should be open, but we could just open it and load it. Table finished, let's open that RFA again. I just closed it. But now that it's open, we can load it into the project and close it. So it's asking us which project? Well, the desk project. That's the project that we were working on. Right, so we have it now selected. We're gonna put it somewhere. Well, let's see here. Level one, offset from level, offset from host, moves with nearby elements. Let's see if we can set some parameters before we go. Ah, well, there's a lot, right? Nested leg material, material, nested chair material, tabletop material, trigger cut with tabletop thickness, which has a formula in it, which is, uh, this is subtracted out from the height. Um, and then here are some more parameters. And there is uh, the middle leg family parameter, which isn't on, and then chair array. So there's a, a few uh, a few more built in. So it's okay for that. And you notice I don't see the middle leg. And this is a, a type one. There's type one and type two. Well, there's type two with the middle leg. So let's put in type two. Select one of the type one instances of the C15 family, uh, table family, and then click edit type from the properties palette. Locate the nested leg material parameter, launch the material browser. All right, so let's go into type one. Click it. Uh, and I think we're supposed to just click it and then edit type and look at the uh, nested leg material parameter. Nested leg material parameter. And launch the material browser. Well, there is, there's the family button. Add a parameter, global. And then right next to it is the material browser, ellipsis. Search for white and load the material named metal paint finish white. Metal paint finish white. Search for white. White. Metal paint finish white. That's it right there. Metal paint finish white matte from the library into your project. In the graphics tab, check the box, use render appearance. Oops. Use render appearance is already checked. And click OK in the material browser to assign it to the nested leg material. Click OK to close the type properties dialog box. Apply. Type properties dialog box, OK. Select one of the type two instances and assign the wood oak material to the nested leg material parameter. So let's um, architecture, component, table, type two, bring that one in, bring this right in next to it. And we could uh, mock it out of there, click it, edit type, type properties dialog box, and assign wood oak to the nested leg. It already is assigned wood oak. Okay. Now that you have created a basic component and explored some of the fundamental modeling techniques, let's look at some additional methods and troubleshooting you might uh, experience working on a real project. Um, well, let's see if there is a, I want to see the difference in the two. Uh, hopefully we have the, uh, we have a, uh, a template that will give us the right rendering appearance. Let's take a quick peek. All right, so the middle leg, well, the middle leg material only exists in one 
of the families of one of the types. So we don't have to be able to compare and contrast unless we change it. So this one is oak, right? And these legs are uh, white metal uh, matte finish. So as you can see, with one family, two types, you can change parameters within uh, a hosted family. You know, you could change these these attributes, if you will, of these families um, that have nested families within them. You have the ability to change them within the host project. Whereas in in a lot of the ORCAD platforms, you have to explode it or uh, uh, XP the uh, the table, the, the, the block, which is like an exploding place and inherit the properties from the parent file. And it is only because there's no bi-directional associativity between the files. They're two different files. And in essence, this is as well. But as you can see, there's that constant bi-directional associativity between the hosted project and the family uh, file. There's a constant read-write relationship. And that's what allows us to uh, edit these things on the fly if the parameters are built into them, right? So uh, before we get into uh, troubleshooting techniques, which is pretty much almost going to bring us to the bottom line in this chapter, uh, we'll stop it here, give you a chance to digest that. Let me do my thing, grab some more coffee. Hopefully you woke up. It's 4.37. And again, you know, no one's up yet. Uh, early bird gets the worm. And that's my mantra with this. I, it may, uh, I may appear a bit eccentric, but, uh, you know, the only way I've been able to get as far as I have in the understanding of the software and the hardware over the years has been putting in the extra effort. You know, uh, granted, don't get me wrong, I, I, uh, uh, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the means. But if you do give that little bit of extra effort, you'll find um, it'll return dividends down the road. So um, let's, you know, let's keep going. Let's plug away and let's get through this because we're going to be talking about stairs, which are very, very complicated um, endeavor. All right, so I'm going to stop it here and hopefully you enjoyed the video and um, we'll pick it up on the other end. Just don't forget to bring your pick, right? Bring your pick. We're in a group, man. <laughs>